Hello and welcome. We're going to solve this problem together, but first try it on your own. I'm sure you can do more than you might think. Alright, so let's read the question together. It says, which graph below does not, so not, represent a function of x? So we have these four graphs right here. We have to fi figure out which one of these is a function of x. Uh, it, the basic rule of a function, I'm going to write this down, um, or write down up here, is that a function, right, and any, if anything is to be a function, this means that for any input that you have, any starting point, uh, there is one and only one output. So there is one output for every input. Um, <clears throat> so in these graphs, excuse me, um, our inputs and outputs are represented by points, x's and y's, where x is your input, right? x equals the input, and y equals the output. So here, in the first graph, this is a function, y. Well, you might be able to tell from what you see here, but for example, this point is the point 1, 2. So x is our input, 1, and 2 is our output. So there's one input, one, with one output. And the same is true for the next point, it's two comma three. Two is the input and three is the output. Three is the input and the next point, and four is the output, point, the next whole number point, and so on and so forth. So this is a function because there's no input with more than one output. In fact, the only way to break this would be to somehow add another line, like maybe attached above it, like, like this, let's say. And what that would mean then is that you have, let's say this point, one comma three, so if you have 1, 2, and 1, 3 in your, in your graph, that means there's an input 1 with two different outputs, 1, 2, and 1, 3. So it's not a function, right? Because the input 1 can only have one output. And essentially, because we're basing our function based on x, it says a function of x, that means x is our input. If it said a function of y, that might reverse things, and y would be the input, and x would be the output. But they're specifying that x is the input. So that means, essentially, that there can't be any situation on your graph where if you go up, let's see, if, say if you draw a vertical line, a straight up and down line, it's called a vertical line test, if it crosses your graph more than once, that means that your input has more than one output and it's not a function. So if, if, with that knowledge in mind, if we look at our different choices here, I'll clear some of this off, um, A is a function. So if we're looking for something that's not a function, B is a function as well, because at no point does this graph tip back over on itself. This is called a parabola, right? It's like this nice U-shape right here. Every input has exactly one output. The same is true for D. Every input has an output. But C is the answer, right? Why? Well, look at this example. We have this point, 1, 1, and this point right here, 1, 3. So there's two imp one input, excuse me, 1, with two different outputs, 1 and 3. And the same happens on all these other points here, these whole number points. We have 2, 1, and 2, 3. And all the points in between here, between 1 and 2, like 1 and, one and a half, 1, and 1 and a half, 3, are also points that are right on top of each other. So this is not a function. Um, if this was to be drawn as a function, you'd be calling it probably the greatest integer function. Um, to name graph D, this V shape is called the absolute value function. And of course, A is called a linear function. And if you missed it before, B is called a parabola. This is the graph of x squared. All right, thanks. Hope this helped.